Well, of course, I mean, you know, when you smoke a cigar... It's With ash holes. It'd be cool. You know, you put the, you put the cigar in and, and then, then you start the fucking video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we're back. Thank you so much for joining us today here on Smoke Signals. So I um, uh, just want to in- introduce our, my guest today. I'm here speaking with iPost Alone. How you doing, my man? What's up, Artie? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. This is actually our premiere episode, so he's doing me a big favor. Help me break in the 5 o'clock spot here on City World Radio. So, um, Post, listen, I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions just to ease into this episode, okay? Um, everybody who's listening right now, um, other than your fans who are from Instagram, you know, and YouTube and stuff, um, they, they all know about what I love. I talk about what I love all the time, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to talk a little bit about what you love okay let's do it all right so here's my question no question number one favorite cigar Bahike. oh that's so cheap okay all right all right so um that's easy okay uh, th- that is easy uh so uh, i want to make it a little more difficult can you please tell me and tell the people really quickly why you like the Bahike so much i like it because it's it represents something that's hard to achieve just like when you know you work hard and you mm-hmm. finally get what you want but is the same thing we just you can't walk into any b&m or brick and mortar store especially here in the states and buy one you can't walk in anywhere in the world and just pick up a cigar or pick up a bihike and just smoke it so uh let's see how much you like bihike do you know what the word bihike means i have an idea so uh cohiba right is actually the taino word for tobacco okay and bihike is actually the priest or the uh chieftain that would conduct the ceremonies with tobaccos in the in the village that was the bahike okay i heard yeah something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah 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 um now uh i'm pretty sure you know this uh what, what, what you know i love the bahikes too you, it's what's funny is if you ask me that i would tell you the same thing but um w- what exactly so other than just the because obviously the bahike has an aura around it right everybody knows about the bahike it's yeah. like in, in hushed tones everyone wants one yep everybody loves them i have a couple that i've been aging for like five years and i don't dare you touch don't them to. you know no <laughs> no, no. I, I well that's let's talk about that a bit later but how about as far as the flavor what 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 what, what do you like about the bahike as far as how it tastes so basically, bahike. If if you were to take, let's say, just any Cuban cigar, uh-huh. just let's say, let's say for example, a Bolivar or, ev- or even a Punch, just any regular production Cuban okay. cigar, and you were to smoke it right now, it would be full of those flavors that you would only get from Cuban tobacco and Cuban soil. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. I guess some people call it hay or mm-hmm. barnyard yeah. aroma. Mm-hmm. Uh, but bahike has those notes that you're looking for in a Cuban cigar, except mm-hmm. toned down and like smooth. Like mm-hmm. it's just. It's just a smooth feeling, and when you're smoking it, it's it's not harsh, but it's also not too mellow, and you're you're getting what you want. It's basically like, like uh, like sex. It's yeah. a, it, it's the it's 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 the closest you're gonna get. Yeah, I I, I with guess your on. I guess I'll have to agree. But you know what's interesting about the BK and uh, are you familiar with the medio tempo leaf? Uh, a little bit. I'm not too familiar with the with the process of growing tobacco and okay. fermenting and and all, all right, that. Cool. But so I, I, I let me I teach you. Let me teach you real quick about Shoot. this because this is really awesome. So the thing that makes the uh, BK so uh, amazing is that they have something called the super lajero or the medio tempo, okay. which grows in about one out of every seven plants. So it's the, you know the lajero is the top of the plant. It gets the most sunlight, ergo the most amount of oil production. So when you ferment, and that's it, the strongest. Yes, part, yes, right? that's what gives it the most flavor. And then sometimes there's an even higher level, the medio tempo. Uh, but again, like I said, it's only one out of seven plants. So now you have that that leaf, right? The rarity of it. Yeah. And on top of that, when you're talking about cohiba plants, uh, cohiba is known to use maybe about half of their cohiba uh, tobacco. Well, that's why they're for, cohiba. Yeah, for the cigars. So uh, you have to put that into perspective as well. If the medio tempo doesn't mean meet the extremely strict standards of the cohiba tobacco, that's going to go towards some other cigar or you know some other process, not towards the BKs. So that's what really, really, really makes them so. Uh, amazing and Look, so delicious. In, in addition to it being delicious i like that you know I, let's say for example i get a i get a, a bihike one or even a box right mm-hmm. and i and i go to smoke it i light it up as i'm cutting it you know there's a small possibility that this may be the last one i'm smoking mm-hmm. i kind of like that mm. that feeling that goes along with don't get me wrong it tastes great but a lot of cigars taste great opus x tastes great mm-hmm. a, a lot you know mm-hmm. you can go into any cigar store you know throw a dart and you'll you'll hit most likely a cigar that tastes good but but Hike, in addition to tasting great you have a cigar that you know what this may be your last time smoking it because mm-hmm. as an american especially with the embargo and everything we may not get another one here or 
You know, no, even, I, I, even overseas, they may not get one because Habanos keeps saying that this is the last. This is the last time we're releasing that's it. That's true. They've, oh, my, you're absolutely right about that. They've, uh, they're, they've threatened that a, a whole Many bunch of times, times and they yeah. come out every, like, what would you say? I, would, I think, like, every, every couple year. of years. <laughs> well, now it seems like every year, doesn't it? But it, it, I remember when I got them, I didn't see them for a couple of years. Like, at least they were extremely rare. And then they came, like, maybe, like, from 2015 on. They, so I was here in uh, in, in New York at a... At a uh, a lounge, a cigar lounge, and we, we got into the conversation of Bahike and the gentleman who owned the cigar lounge. He said to me, uh, enjoy it because that's it. They're done. <laughs> They're discontinued. They're not making them anymore. So a couple of weeks after that, I, I went to Switzerland, and I'm in uh, La Casa del Habano in Switzerland, and I meet the director uh, for Habanos in there, and he says to me, yeah, next next month we're, we're going we're gonna to release a few more Bahike, and I'm thinking, <laughs> wait a second. They're not discontinued. He's like, no, no. Th this store, the one we were in, he's like, you're you're gonna have a few boxes that you can buy here. I'm like, wow. You you know, cause okay, can I can I tell you? It would be like Disney canceling Mickey Mouse. Yeah, they're smarter than it, that. It's it, it makes no sense because you know that's their Cohiba, bread winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cohiba. Well, I mean, the, the, every Cohiba sells like yeah, fire. Yeah. Let's be honest. But, but the Bahikes, everybody mm -hmm, wants every, exactly. Um, the the here's the, the cool thing. So the first round of Bahikes came out, I believe, in 2006. Uh, 10 100 boxes of 40 they were all rolled by one woman named Norma and the mm -hmm. funny thing is those le those Bihikes did not have the uh the medio tempo the medio tempo but they were a unique 7 inch like i think it was 50 God, is yeah. that the one with the old band where the, yeah, you I have the dual it. bands, yeah, Cohiba, yeah, and then exactly. it has the second band mm -hmm. that says Bahike, yeah, yeah, and I, they had numbers on them yes, back then. Yes, every single those one are, was numbered. I have yeah. never seen those in person in no, real no, life, yeah, only in pictures. They're extremely hard to, they're, it's almost impossible. like impossible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I wonder but, if anybody still has those. Can you imagine people holding on to oh, those? Um, well, I don't know if you saw, did you see the post that I made? I put, made a, a post on Instagram that's uh, Ash Holes NYC. Ash, excuse me, Ash, ash hole. hole. A S H H O S <laughs> Singular. A S H H O L. -E There's only one Ash Hole, right? And I posted about these, and um, and and actually, this one guy that like apparently like this guy knows like he knows he, stuff, he's, huh? he's smoking his shin. He's like, yeah, somebody offered me a box of hundred brand, like, yeah, never right. opened for two hundred forty for two hundred forty thousand dollars. I'm oh, serious. Okay, okay, yeah, two hundred yeah, quarter yeah, million yeah. bucks. Yeah. It might be real. There's that possibility. Yeah. Okay, so. There you go. We broke down the Bahike. Let's do it. Everybody understands what's going on. So my next question is, well, I can't, I, I, I guess it's a kind of a loaded question. Like, what is your least favorite cigar? Or at least, what brand don't you like? And I know, I know that's a tough one. I don't want to. You don't want to disclose hurt feelings. that? Oh, I don't give a shit. So I'm going to just say it. I'm, I'm not a fan of Rocky Patel. I think uh, they, they, they're like Little Wayne. They make like a billion different okay. cigars, well, and some of them taste fine. good. Some no, no, you don't have. To I'm, I'm okay shit. with it. No, you know what? I I actually Gurkha, I, I really dislike J.C. Newman. Gurkha is extremely overhyped, in my opinion. I don't uh, like. I haven't had a Gurkha that I liked, unfortunately. Well, so I, I'm sorry about like I don't. You know, I understand that we have to like kind of play nice, but also we got to be honest with our with our I, listeners. I think J.C. Newman. I think it's way overpriced for what they're offering. It's basically uh, Dutch masters with nice, <laughs> nice bands and in a nice leather box. Did you ever see the, the box? The box is beautiful, but the cigar is just a regular cigar. Don't I get mean, me wrong. It's not bad. But when you look at the price, you look at the cigar, you look at the box, the box is beautiful, the price is outrageous, uh, and the cigar is just okay. It, it, it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 that's the thing. It's supposed to, like, catch your eye or something. Right? And it it's, does. Uh, but uh, but who, who gives a shit? Once, it and that's it. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going back to it. Yeah. I actually have a Gurkha, His Majesty's Reserve. I haven't opened it yet. It's a $750 cigar. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. So, I'm gonna, so this one is a little hard to price. Check this out. Sure. What my rarest Gurkha, I would say, is called the Gurkha Trump Presidente. Right, so they made 2016 of these bad wow. boys for his inauguration, oh, wow. and they gave them out during his inaugural dinner. Oh, wow. Now here's the trick: uh, they didn't give them all out. They had a couple left over. So what? Somehow, of course they got to sell. It, I dude. forgot what website it was. Uh, some really like, it's not. It's not one of the more popular ones. It's a bit more obscure website. My my, it was my boy Brad that got this, not mm. me. So, and they sold them for 20 bucks a pop. Okay. On this website, like a hundred of them or okay. something, and he bought like four of them, and we traded I've for never some seen Cubans. Them. Yeah, so now I, I have like so now I got my hands on two of them. Mm -hmm. So I, wh what do you do? How much does that shit cost? I don't know. I'm just gonna wait until either he gets impeached or reelected, and then I'm gonna sell it to like a really really rich Republican. Oh, you're gonna guy. make a killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you'll do well. But again, they sell for like fifteen, but they sold for about fifteen bucks. It, here's the thing: Are you familiar with um, uh, Half Wheel? Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's the, he's the, arguably the best, yeah, most yeah. well-known. That's the yeah. source, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so he, he did, uh, he had a series where he did, like, extremely 
extremely rare opuses, extremely, yeah. extremely rare. And you, this Trump president, a cigar was going to be on that list. Okay. But then once they, they sold a couple of them online, he had to take it off the Why? list. Because it was that now, you know, can, you know, even if it was just like 100 sticks, he had to take it off the super rare list because people were able to get their hands uh, on them. Okay. Uh, even if it was for it. like three days or Let four days. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Half Whale or Cigar Aficionado? Ooh. Uh... I mean, where do you? What's your source? Where do you get your cigar information? Well, to be perfectly honest, I I don't particularly read Half Wheel reviews at all. No. Uh, just because um, I find I but I don't really look. I I don't read reviews at all. Period. Okay, that's like, a good way. Like to go like on. because you make your own decision. Exactly. I I don't want to be like because uh, since I do reviews, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like of course. For, you know feel like I, I so people are putting yeah you don't want to be biased head. and you don't want somebody exactly. planting seeds. And, and right? also sometimes like I, I sometimes I have an issue because I'm like. A little conscious, self-conscious that I, I I repeat myself when it comes to cigars. It's okay, but some cigars everybody taste, does. Some cigars taste the same. Everybody's going to tell you, oh, this cigar tastes oaky, exactly. or this one has cocoa or espresso. It's all the but same. So the, but, yeah, yeah, but here's the thing: half half wheel though. Like they, sometimes I'm reading his reviews, and I no disrespect. Like I uh, I know that it's a very prestigious, and they have their chops and all that. But it, sometimes it feels like he's having a stroke because <laughs> it's like it's like I taste oats and uh, rubber. And a little bit of uh, you know uh, methane vapors. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Are you okay, dude? Like, read, <laughs> read, read the half wheel review of the Pelo Oro, um, or um, the, it's like the five hundred or six hundred dollar uh, pure uh, Oro, the Davidoff. Oh, the Davidoff, yeah. Pelo um, Oro, is that it or something? Uh, Oro. Oh man, it's on it the tip out, of my tongue. It came out like yeah, a it's year a five hundred dollars a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, when he reviews it, it's it's like I so, don't even no, know. No, Puro de Oro is the one with the gold no, band. Yeah, that's a Pelo Oro. Is that Pur no, Puro, that's aging Puro de Oro is the one with the gold band. Yeah. And the Oro Blanco. Oro, Oro Blanco, Blanco is the, the white gold. One. Yes. It, it, what yeah, the man, fuck is I don't going know. on? That review, it was it was I was reading it and I'm like, what's is, is this, it worth five hundred bucks? well, he said. Well, the way the way that I see it is that. If if you want to, so you have a ten dollars cigar. Let's say okay. a good starting point is um, Padron four thousand. Whatever. Shoot. Okay. Everybody likes that shit. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Unless you're retarded. But <laughs> so Padron four thousand. Then you got a twenty dollars cigar, like the sixty four. Okay. Is it two times better? No. Okay. Well, I would say it is. I like I like the sixty four two times wow. better than right. the thousand. And okay. but thousand's a good cigar. Sixty four. Tastes very similar. Sixty four is one of it's my. It's just favorites, a little though. aged, I guess. But then, but then you got like let's say the twenty sixes, which are okay. like let's say thirty dollars, and that's bullshit too, because you can get a twenty dollar one. But okay. let's say the 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 yearly padrones, right? Like the forty. The anniversary. Yeah, ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Forty dollars. Are they two times better than the sixty four? Are they? Hell no. Yeah. Then you got I, let's I say agree. like let's say you got like the 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 the, the hammer, the padrone fifty. That's, That's like an a excellent seventy-five dollars cigar. cigar, but is it? It is that cigar eight times better than a four thousand? No, and maybe, so the, maybe. But then you get you then you get to five hundred dollars a cigar, and then you yeah. have to ask yourself: Is this fucking cigar really fifty you times know, better than? Yeah, a but there's a difference between you know setting a hundred dollar bill on fire or setting five hundred dollar bills on mm -hmm, fire. Mm -hmm. And if the David, well, you you're you're very experienced with mm -hmm. retail, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, what do you got to do to sell a five hundred dollar cigar? One well, cigar. I can understand if the box is five hundred bucks. That's well, one thing. One cigar. So okay. That's that's cool that you asked me that. So let's say I'm in the humidor and we have this cigar. How would I sell it, right? Yeah, what's Number your Number one, pitch? I would not push it on everybody because of that's course, a little yeah, obnoxious, yeah. right? Some guy that smokes $10, $12. Yeah, you want cigar. the guy that's looking yeah, yeah. for so, opus. So, so, yeah, exactly. So a guy walks in, and I would be very, like, non – I wouldn't be like, you, you got to check. I would be like, listen. Are you in that mood today? Do yeah. you want to see the do you, like? Do you want to see the cool shit or not? How's Just your tell stocks me. Do yeah, today. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and if the guy's like, yeah, show me what you got, you know, uh, they know that I'm just trying to show them the goodies. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I always try to be very non-threatening. I never try to push it like, yo, you got to try this. This is my five hundred dollars, best five hundred dollars uh, I've ever spent. You know, because honestly, I haven't tried it. I obviously I've never can't tried that either. shit. So I'm not gonna tell the I, guy. I just, that I, I don't know. I don't have the courage or the heart to spend or or even light five hundred dollars on fire. And honestly, I you know I could look at it from the point or of you know this would look nice in my humidor but then again it's going to take away from other sticks i could buy i could get five bahike for that yeah price. yeah of course i mean that's because that's kind of how it works right you got to take your favorite cigar and multiply and then you got to like kind of like see okay how many of these can i get exactly, for the price of this exactly. shit? is it worth it exactly that's why i brought up the four thousand because that's a like good baseline ten dollar cigar i think yeah, nice yeah, maduro yeah. you know it's a great it's right. great size nice flavorful cigar yeah 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 I, oh, so i guess uh since we're on that note i'd like to ask you a couple more things so yeah, like, what do you, what, what's your thing mild Medium, full, are you like me? Are you all across the spectrum? I'm all across the yeah, spectrum. One I day like I could be smoking, you know, something that's, that that'll knock me out, and then mm -hmm. the next day I'll say, you know what, let me let me take it easy. 
Smoke gotcha. something mild. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's what I love because it's very important. I know guys that are like, oh, uh, Ashton, oh, uh, you know, oh, you're smoking a Monte Cristo, like, uh, you know, like a, an, an original, like, oh, that's too light, dab it off. Why would I waste my money? Eh. You know, like super serious guys that. No, no, but I... it's a, it's a different thing. Like, have you, like you ever had like an Eastern Standard or dab it off in the morning with a coffee? It's heavenly. It's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and, Eastern Standard actually tastes better aged. Oh, I don't yes. I don't like them like when they're fresh too much. One year. Put a couple of years on them. Oh, they're, they're good. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, amazing. That's uh, you, uh, you hit it right in the head. And uh, everybody, like a lot of people that know me, know how much I love the Eastern Standard aged. Yeah. It's, it really is. Which the, one? The 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 cakewalk. Oh. That Figurado is amazing. <sighs> They just came out. Did you know they just came out with a new Eastern Standard? Uh, it has a really ridiculous. The gold band? N- no, no. Wait, maybe. Maybe. It has a really ridiculous name, like Far Eastern Standard or something. Yeah, I think I heard of that. It, I haven't it, tried it's it. Made, it's made in with collaboration with somebody. I don't remember who it was. He's always collaborating yeah, with yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Caldwell loves doing yeah. that. Yeah. But it works sometimes. Who, who, uh, AJ Fernandez, Matt Booth. They're that always was great. Together. That was great. That, that was, was, the, the, that was good. I have one, actually. They're amazing. I'm I, thinking I, about smoking it. What what are you talking about? You never the had tea? have you never no, had, I've it? had it? Oh, okay, I've had okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. I got there's a new one though. They they the Habano. Re- yeah, exactly. I don't know the, about the Habano. The All color. I'll say is the Connecticut was trash. Was well, it? it wasn't trash, but what it was was it wasn't the it they wasn't the original. Reviews, though. I don't give a shit. The original. <laughs> oh the, yeah, you don't read reviews. Yeah, yeah, That's the right. The original. Listen, the original was just. You also hate Lost City. Oh, oh yeah, but I mean, because it's like. How it's, can it's, you hate Opus X okay. Lost City? All right, let me ask you this. Yeah, you don't tell me why. Do you know what makes it? Do you know why Andy what, Garcia? But what what what's the what's the gimmick? The you, movie, right? They, no, no, no. It's there. It's an apple fucking some bullshit. Apple brandy casks. The tobacco oh, is aged. Ha- everybody. Yeah, but that. it's bull- Listen, some do whiskey, some do cognac. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. You know what? Every blender has his own shtick, where they they'll they'll do something a little different from the next guy, mm-hmm. just so their cigar tastes. You know, just a tiny, tiny bit different. Well, and this is my beef with Gurkha as well. I find that when you're doing a lot of uh, barrel aging is fine. When you're doing barrel aging that from used casks, I feel like you're just trying to take shitty tobacco and hide the fact that it's shitty. Well, doesn't he use Louis the Thirteenth? No, no, no. For, that's it's, for His Majesty's yeah, yeah. reserve. He and, uses and, Louis and the Thirteenth. That's that's or, what I hear. Or for the royal, the 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 royal courtesan. That's Gurkha's million dollar cigar. Oh yeah. I've talked. Oh, about, but that's I've in talked, diamonds and gold. Yeah, and yeah. All yeah. That you know stuff. what? They, so on, I've man. talked about the on 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 City World Radio before. Do you know what they use? They use, uh, uh Remy Martin Louis the Thirteenth Black Pearl, which goes for buck sixty five per bottle, one hundred sixty five thousand dollars per that's bottle. That's it. <laughs> well, we should be drinking that right That's now. That's it. Yeah. Is it true that the owner of Gurkha doesn't smoke cigars? Did you hear that? Mm. I heard this guy. He owns a cigar company. He doesn't smoke cigars. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it, it's not unheard of, to be honest. Like uh, John, John Drew doesn't smoke anymore. Anymore, really? Oh yeah. yeah. I, you Fidel, know what I've Fidel, noticed? Fidel Castro. Like we just talked about this. Fidel now Castro you're just sto- my heart, stopped man. smoking in the in the late eighties. Uh, That's it, crazy. Because you know what? Uh, I get it. Like, uh, you know, so just you lose you lose the taste for it. Like I used to, I used to love cream soda. Okay. I don't drink any cream soda. I anymore. mean, do you, you own know? a cream soda company? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know what I find? It takes way more than just you know, like loving cigars to run a good company. Like, cause I know. They're, they're All right, company marketing, you know, and and management that that's one thing. But if you're going to present a cigar and say this is the best cigar in the world, don't you think you should smoke it at least try and know for yourself if you're going to say this is the best, especially if you're charging a million dollars. And if you're not charging a million dollars, even if you're charging seven hundred and fifty dollars for a cigar, you're going to tell me this this cigar is worth seven hundred and fifty dollars. You haven't even tried it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, fair enough. But again, the thing is that where I want to come from is the talent, right? If you know how to manage talent. I think you're good, right? Because if you can, if you if you can get somebody that knows what they're so doing, then that should be the face, no? Um, I, I don't know. But I, I understand what you're saying, I, right? I and Jonathan like Drew not smoking cigars, I've actually noticed that. Mm-hmm. But he's also not running Drew Estate anymore. Didn't sure, he, he sell sold it, it. But yeah, he's almost like the face now. Uh, so he's still the face, he's, though. He 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 claims to be the the creative behind it right he's mm. he's an artist now and he he's the creative director more than anything now he's not going to tell you that this is the best cigar but at the same time though john drew is like the reason that i started rolling my own cigars i love his story he's he's really like an underdog story when it comes to it do you know about this shit? i've heard uh, that he had a shop over uh, here not too far from the studio yeah, yeah, yeah world yeah, trade yeah. and that's that, how he started that shit got closed down they used to sell complete trash <laughs> and then he went to nicaragua Why, himself they don't sell com- Complete trash now. <laughs> well, what do you? I, I don't know. No, I, no, it's not bad. I look, like as far thing. as like I. So I'm in. So when I was in retail, right? Uh, 
you know, you would get a kind of like a feel for what uh, people like. And most people tend to be fairly, fairly okay with Drew Estate. Like, I like Drew Estate. No, I was, I was. Listen, even when totally I'm totally a joke. If I get trashed, like uh, if I don't drink much, I'm more of a smoker. But if I do drink, and I get trashed, I could, I could, I could smoke one of those acids, no problem. I've never had an acid, <laughs> but I, I did have a Liga 10th anniversary not too long ago, and it's one of the best cigars I've ever had. The in one my with life. the black band. The one that's impossible to get. It's Wait, not expensive. They so just what's don't impossible? release them. Because there's two impossible ones. There's right the now. all right. So it's the Liga the tenth, tenth anniversary with the black band. It's like black and like gray. What's, yeah, that's it. Okay, because you know there's another one that's even more impossible to get. Which one? The H ninety nine. Yes, I heard of that. That that is true. Yeah, the that's guys a different one. Broke my heart with that shit because they were like hyping it up so much. Wait, they, but did they release them? Yeah. So okay. So here's here's the crazy thing about the H ninety nine. Apparently there was some, they fucked up somewhere. So okay. what what happened is they ended up. They put the carriage before the horse. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, so they they overhyped it. They said we're gonna pump out this amount of cigars. It was like a different rapper, like Corojo, Connecticut Corojo rapper. And the H ninety nine also stands for some sort of. Yeah, tobacco. yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 but I don't know about that. So I, I I'm only telling you what I know right. because I don't want to like misinform. You of know course. what I'm saying? But so so the, they had this Connecticut Corojo that they weren't able to to like make enough of it or it wasn't to the quality. Okay. So what they did is they did a store raffle. So you needed to spend a certain amount of money with Drew Estate uh -huh. per year. I think it was like 25 Gs or something, and then they would put you in this raffle. Wow. And they only gave out 300 boxes so all they're, across they're, the United States. So they're all States. gone, and they, they'll never yeah, be no, again, there's another right? No, there's another raffle like coming up soon, but it's still— Oh, so did they figure out how to, no, grow, how to grow this tobacco no, leaf? No, no, no. I mean, like, listen, I worked in— you, uh, So I worked in Cigar Inn, which was Casa de Monte Cristo, which yeah. is— Monte Cristo, which is— uh, Altinus, which is you know what I mean, like that's the, the biggest name in tobacco. It doesn't get any. I, I think so. They own, they own a piece of Habanos. Yeah, it, they own fifty percent. Yeah, uh, or forty nine, whatever. So it and, doesn't get any bigger than that. And then, and then, oh, hey, can can we get some H ninety nines in the goddamn store? No, absolutely not. No, you, we can't because it's a raffle. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm, again, I, I think Drew Estate did a lot for the industry uh, as far as like the quality of cigars. Has gone up across the board because they really bought their A game when it comes to Liga Provado. So you got to you know, admit, those you, are beautiful. why it's not. I mean, you you think Drew Estate was the catalyst for that? You think uh, Drew Estate is the one that made all the other brands get their act together? Well, I I no. Well, so here's what I think. I think that it was almost like a um, grandfather's game. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like all the companies that were like new. We're kind of like kind of going, moving to the wayside. Okay. But the Monte Cristos, the Romeos, the big dudes they have were been there for a while. Before. Yeah, you know, but w that's, that's what I'm saying. They gotten better because they, yeah, everybody because has everybody better. yeah no because Drew Estate has raised the st the, the, the the level. You so know we have I mean? Drew Estate to thank for all the options that we have today. Because if you go back, let's say to the 90s, you you really didn't have much to choose from. It was all crap. Fuck the 90s. Let's go back to the 1900s. Let me tell you a little story real quick. This is really cool. All right, go. So, Industrial Revolution, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, they started, this is when they started uh, creating not only like, you know, f using using coal and steam engines and all yeah. that shit. They would also create uh, like uh, conveyor belts, you know what I mean? And yeah, they, yeah. Would, they would industrialize the process. So, they pretty much yeah, started. The assembly line. Yeah, exactly, like exactly. So, and that also applied to cigars. And when they would start, so they would start pumping out these cigars in places like Nicaragua, the DR, the United States, Florida, Cuba, uh, Cuba too. But but not not in this the way that I'm talking about. What they would do is they would start using short filler, okay, and they would start using machines to make the yeah. cigars. So what you would get is you would get perfectly like perfect cigars, perfectly rolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looked really nice, but the tobacco was chopped up trash, and uh, it was it was it was cheap because they could pump them out like crazy, right? So Cuba had this issue, like okay. what the fuck they were gonna do? Either they they would have to start industrializing their process as well, which would have completely destroyed. Just, it yeah, yeah. It, everything that we love about Cuban State would have been gone, or they could have just uh, they could have just like lost out on the cigar. Like they would have to drop the cigar industry completely. Wow. That's yeah. Something. So what they ended up doing is that's when the molds were invented. So the oh, Cubans okay. instead, what they did is they made molds, right? Because before that, cigars were like a bit lumpy, mm -hmm. and nobody really gave a shit. Because they were hundred percent yeah, yeah, hand, yeah, hand rolled, right? no yeah. machines. Yeah. So they created the molds, and they started putting their cigars in molds, okay. which made them look better. And, the, uh, you and know, they're and all uniform; pulled, they all look yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pulled better, and they looked beautiful, and they were long filler, and the tobacco was better. And then That's Cuba cool. got to the top, the top of the fucking game. Nice. Because of that, because instead of giving up their like cultural identity and like uh, giving into let's say like the imperialistic industrial yeah, yeah, complex, yeah, yeah. joining the they, industrial yeah, yeah, revolution. Yeah, exactly. They just yeah. well, they decided to 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 keep that, but still produce a better product. And because of that, 
is okay. the reason that we're not smoking short filler bullshit all the time now. That's the reason we don't. Thank we're not, you, thank you, Cuba. Yes, no, seriously. If 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 it wasn't for Cuba, we'd all be smoking Dutch Masters all the time. That would probably be the only thing available because nobody would even go through the the, the process. Imagine yeah. if Cuba, right? Because then once Cuba started producing these beautiful, wonderful cigars, Everybody and they became copied, huh? they became the highest standard of cigar possible in the world. Everybody copied, and well, somebody has to set yeah, a standard. And the reverberations that have been felt since this time, right, right, are, are still being felt now. That's why Cubans are like the 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 top standard to some people. That's uh, the holy grail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even though obviously you can argue that all fucking day, uh, you know, I, I think the Cuban quality. What, is what do you down. think? What do you think will happen when the embargo is lifted and it's a mm. level playing field? You got Nicaragua, Dominican, Honduras, Cuba, uh, and whoever else uh, grows and produces tobacco. What what happens at that? It's going to be a complete shit show. In what sense? In every sense. I'll tell you right now. So number one. Okay, Monte Cristo, Dominican Monte Cristo, the U.S. Monte Cristo, and the Cuban Monte Cristo. The the only reason that these two entities are allowed to exist is because of the embargo. Of course, the uh, the U the 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 Cuba cannot press charges on. There, there's the lawsuits Cristo. all yeah, day yeah, long, yeah, back and it, forth. It's all, but it's all. It's, it's still going on today, yeah, yeah, yeah. sixty years later. But it's none of it's going if uh, yeah, anywhere it's going at all yeah. because of all these like uh, the embargoes and all. That. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing that's going to happen is once this embargo is lifted, there's going to be huge lawsuits against Altidus and against Imperial for all that shit. Okay. Now, um, there's probably going to be a really easy fix. It's probably going to be a Monte Cristo Havana, Monte Cristo USA, or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, that's easy to fix. You right? just put a little band that says Cuba, Dominican, yeah. Nicaraguan. But it's also going to work kind of the other way because now Dominican cigars are going to be flooding the European and Asian markets as well. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing's wrong with that. Here's where the problem comes in. The U.S. has two times bigger market than the rest of the world combined. For cigar purchases. For cigar purchases, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah, we, we capitalism, baby. That's how yeah, we I love it. Yeah, so... Uh, so what ends up happening is once America starts flooding in with Cuban cigars, uh, it, so are we going to hurt the Dominican yeah. economy? No, we're going to hurt the Cub the Cubans. The Cuban cigars are all going to go down the drain. So Cuban the quality, yeah, cigar smoking has gotten has gotten down since the like mid nineties. Of course, till now when it comes to Cubans, like well, it's a war waged on tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm talking about just Cubans in general have gone down. If you ask anybody, they'll tell you the the, uh, the amount that's being sold has gone down. No, since no, no, the no, no, no. They've been selling way more. The quality has gone down because the popularity has gone up. Oh, that makes sense. Listen, yeah. if, okay, so okay. picture this: nineteen ninety nine. 19, right. Okay, fuck that. Nineteen ninety five. Okay. Right. Me and you were sitting around. That's the year Opus right. X came out. Right? right now, right. Me and you both order Cubans. Okay. Right. Me and you both order Cubans. I'll get from a Cohiba. Switzerland. Right. All right. All right. This, now, we're in nineteen ninety five right now. No, no. no two thousand nineteen. Nineteen ninety five. What are we gonna do? Uh, there's not much we're we gonna, can uh, do. I have honest. We're gonna. I no, have no, we're not going. I have honest. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> what, send him in Morse code. Bring no, me some Cubans. No, we're you know? gonna go to the guy downstairs around the exactly. corner. Who know? He knows a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. And we're we, yeah. You, so there's a good uh, chance we might get a fake so, one. Yeah. So times are changing, one, so. right? It's e even though Cubans are still illegal in the U.S. to bring in, not to smoke to bring in. It's, no, it's legal to bring them in. It's illegal to sell them and buy them, but it's perfectly legal to bring it. Like if you were to go on vacation yeah. and you brought back, you know, a bunch of uh, boxes of Cuban cigars, that's perfectly but legal as long getting, as you're going to smoke I'm them yourself. I'm talking about getting them shipped in. I don't think that's allowed. Yeah, that's of not. Tax. Yeah. yeah. So, but because you're purchasing. But they don't give a shit. Like, honestly, nobody really even gives I don't, a shit. I don't know. I can't speak on that because <laughs> I don't know enough about it. I, I, well, I can. I order Cubans all the time from uh, overseas and... I haven't had a single shipment. Lost. But I've seen people have problems. Yeah, yeah. I I've know. seen people I, I, got empty boxes <laughs> because the customs took the cigars out. But here's the thing. So at least from where I get mines from, and I know that and you know you are aware of that yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm very aware. They have a policy. If a box is gone They'll for replace a month, it, right? one month, within one month. Yeah, and I've never had an issue. So No, that's great. But, but that, shout out to I Havana. I Havana is the fucking best they're, sponsor of the awesome. show. They're awesome. They're <laughs> awesome. And so uh, where, where was I? You were saying that we we took a time yeah, machine. Okay. We went back to nineteen ninety five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, we weren't allowed to get uh, Cubans. It right was now. very, very difficult. Okay, so so that's why, right? The quality has gone down because supply and demand. Right. Right. It's one island producing all the tobacco. So let's say, let's say you're producing all these cigars. Let's say in ten, fifteen to twenty years, the the demand has tripled. Yeah. What's going to end up happening? The your output is going to at least try to triple, right? Because yeah. you want to make more money. People want the shit. You want to sell the shit. 
what does that also lead to? That leads to cutting corners. That leads to yeah, they uh, gotta speed up. Yeah, yeah, they, we're not gonna age. They gotta grow long. tobacco and faster. Now, so and back more. in the day, they would age cigars for two years, three years, yeah, and not have anymore. to call it a reserva. Yeah, or, yeah. Now they they slap a fucking sticker on it, reserva. Yeah, to let you reserva, know. And then you're paying sixty fucking bucks for that it's shit. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and now that's happening now. Can you so imagine? You when the oh lifted? my God! Do I think? Listen, can I tell you something? This embargo is the best thing that's ever fucking happened to me, <laughs> and you too. Trust me. The only reason we're allowed to smoke really good Cubans as Americans is because, because of the embargo. The yeah. embargo and Canadians who have legal Cubans, I feel bad for them. The worst. They're expensive as hell. Yeah, because they're that, allowed man. to. They can go to this local shop and buy any delicious ass Cuban that they want, but they're going to be paying like quadruple what I would pay. Well, what's the reason for that? So, well, socialism. And I'm a socialist. <laughs> no, I'm a socialist. Listen, I, I think you know everyone should have health care and all that jazz, but I, I don't think you should be paying like 40, 50 bucks for right, Monte so number two. As Americans yeah. here, we pay a premium as it is for Cuban cigars, but Canadians pay even more than we do, and it's illegal over no, here. No, that's what I'm telling you. We don't pay any premium at all. No, we, 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 it's, it's more expensive here than it is, say, like where it's legal, but like we, Switzerland. Ha, well, where or, do you have a... Where do you have a, a how do you compare Cubans, the price of Cubans in the U.S.? There's no market for it. It's all black market. Well, all right. So Are when, when we order Robbins? online, when we – no, no, I'm saying when we order Cubans online, okay. let's say, for example, from I Havanas and whoever sells them, mm -hmm. they mark it up because they'll sell sure. it cheaper in Switzerland. They're coming from Switzerland. Really but if you price. were in Switzerland, you would get it cheaper there. Mm -hmm. Pro yeah, well, no, of course. There's got to be so some markup. The premium I'm talking about, yeah, is the, the markup between uh, Switzerland and coming to the U.S. Oh, but Canadians pay about. even more than we do, which is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they don't have to pass Switzerland and pay $200 and pass go and all that stuff. Well, that's because, well, that's because um, uh, again, I'm not going to speak for you, but the source that I get from, we don't pay uh, any import tax at all. I'm sure the company does, but... Well, did you ever look at the – okay, so when we get the, the boxes in, it says on the box that it's cigars, but it only says, let's say you order $300 worth, it says it's $30 worth of cigars. Oh, uh, I never paid attention. Yeah, 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 I did. So that's 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 what they do. That's the Man, I'm just happy that the cigars no, are no. in there when I open the box because I hear these crazy yeah, yeah, stories yeah, yeah, yeah. how people open up their boxes and they're empty because Customs really, emptied it out. I don't really have that much. Uh, um, uh, I think I think I have honest is fucking mint. They're, they're great. great. The uh, Brian from I Have Honest, the guy that I always m email if I have any issues, uh, you know, is is always responds same day. You know what I mean? Nice, like nice, they're, they're nice. awesome. Like if something is like taking a, a little bit long, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're responsive, on? actually. It's yeah, I've noticed it's that. Awesome. Don't, I, I order from my Havanas all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and their fucking deals are... Um, okay, you know what? The prices are incredible, these unbeatable. Need, uh, and these guys need to sponsor the shit out of us. Yeah, man. This is I Havanas, you <laughs> got to sponsor this show, man. Um, you know who else I, I would like to shout, uh, shout out? Who? Humidors Direct. Have you ever tried them? Oh, so that's the... They sell, obviously, Humidors. humidors. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Personally, I haven't because... I get weird humidors, and plus, remember, I worked in retail. So oh, okay. All right. When I would so get my humidors, it would usually be from, like, where I was working, you know, employee discount. So I didn't it. work in retail, so I order my humidors from mm -hmm. uh, Humidors Direct, and I have to order every so often because I, I'm an idiot when it comes to cigars, and I buy way too many, mm -hmm. and I always end up needing more humidors. I go to Humidors Direct. They got the best stuff there, man. They're, I have, they're I have really eight, good. I have eight humidors. You're talking to the – you're preaching <laughs> the choir, bro. I get it. Everybody so why don't you just build yourself a walk-in humidor? I was, th you know, I, I have the space too. I could do it, but um, uh, it, you know, I, I know that was a joke, and I'm taking it way too <laughs> seriously. But uh, because I, I've thought about it, you know, it would be nice. At least maybe sometimes I thought about just buying. Man, one go of to those, Home Depot, get some cedar wood. One of those wood, shelves. One of those shelves. You know what I mean? Like I've uh, been thinking about it too. Actually, yeah. The that re that's why I mention it because I'm actually thinking of doing I, it for I myself. Get it. I Instead get of it. you know buying from humidors direct, they're great and all, <laughs> but you know I, I'd we, like we, to. We just both have, have the humidor. same disease. We understand. I think I think all of us cigar enthusiasts all have the same disease. We buy a lot more cigars than we can smoke. Well, uh, and we also buy cigars to age, to collect, to look at. Yeah. The, How that, many cigars do you have aging? Uh, a couple thousand, I'm sure. Well, I, yeah, I have maybe like 150 that I smoke. And the rest, and the rest aging. is aging. Is, is, so the I have the I'm same touching, thing. You know? I have the same thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. So, you know what? On that note, I, I, let's let's talk about something interesting. Uh, what, what, when you're humidor, would you say is your magnum opus? You know, your, your, your the, what, what? What would you chop like chop off a finger to to, to have another one of or whatever you know like what's your best you know what that's, that's what's your greatest thought. what's your greatest treasure I really want no um, no no what do you have oh what do I have yeah we'll get to what I you want few, after I have a few cigars that I okay, have top that, three top three all right so Opus X twenty would fall into the top three Opus X twenty years mm -hmm. the blue with the blue labels I okay. love those. Uh, 
But you would say that's the rarest cigar you have? Oh, rarest. I yeah. thought like my, my no. pride and joy. No, no, my no, no. no. What, what's your, like, what, 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 what? Okay, so let's say I come over to your crib and, and you want to show me, like, you want to you wanna show up. I want to impress you, right? What would you show me? I would show you a 1980s Monte Cristo number one. No. Oh. Uh, I would show you. I saw that picture. I remember you posted it, right? I, I don't think I posted Are the Monte sure? Cristo. I was about to say the cigar that um, I'm, I posted. I have a, a La Corona from the late 50s. This is before Castro, mm. before the embargo. It's it's a cigar. That, it's it's a Corona shape. It's I called La Corona. What, I don't know what the fuck that is. So it's a pre-embargo yeah. Cuban cigar. Awesome. And I have a Ramon Alonis pre-embargo, also from around the same time period. A mm. Ramon Alonis, also Corona shaped Cuban cigar. How would you come across him? I got him from a guy in Switzerland. He's mm. a he's a real deal cigar collector. He has like the the craziest pre-embargo, mm. pre-Fidel Castro. He, the guy has a mint collection. Like you, I, I walk into his place, like I gotta, I gotta wipe the drool from mm -hmm. my chin. It's unbelievable. And this, he's given me three pre-embargo, three pre-embargo cigars. I only have those two left. One I smoked. That's actually I posted it on Instagram. I actually filmed smoking it because it was just, it was unbelievable. I get it. Have you ever smoked a pre-embargo? Oh, uh, so I actually have uh, uh, seven of them. Oh, okay. So uh, you know no, what I'm talking I have about. Dude. I have, I have fourteen. All right, so you know, so have you smoked them though? No. I know you like to collect. No, so, so try I, one. I, I have, I have uh, from 1962. All I right, have, the year I, before. I okay. have seven um, Partagas. You know where I got those from? This is what always gets me excited. I got those from the uh, the the damn it the 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 director or the, the assistant director of appraisals at Sotheby's auction oh my house. God, that's he's a awesome. member. He's a member at my store. Oh wow. So I would always we would always trade oh, we would always trade Cubans and then one day he's like, you know what? I'm getting I, I got had, something for you. I, <laughs> I had four boxes of these and I'm to getting tired of them. Oh, Here you go. I know God. you collect and he just hands them to me and Dude, I Dude that's him. priceless. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and, and that's what the, that's what's so beautiful about it. Like like the, the dude is legit. Yeah. Like shout out Come to on, Philip Jalet at Sotheby's over there on seventy fourth. Like my man is the shout best. Out. Yeah, yeah. He he's a member at at our fifty third street location. Nice. Like I said, oh, our. So I then you know. Home. So then I would impress you if I would show you these oh, cigars. Yeah. Uh, so and then I have these other five cigars that are all from the early nineteen hundreds, but those are wow. unsmokable. Yeah, you can't smoke those. Those are they're bricks. They're pretty much so. They're no, solid. Yeah, I tried to humidify them. That. There's really seems like no point. Nothing's happening. Yeah. And plus, there um, two of them are wrapped in foil. One of them is wrapped in some sort of wax paper. Yeah, and um, and that's I, just I, for looks. That's I, for a museum. No, but I just don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what that's made out of. That could eh. be fucking lead. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to smoke that. But yeah. the pre embargoes, you could smoke it. Oh yeah. And yeah. the ones that I have, I know for a fact, were kept in great condition because the guy I got them from, Alan from Cigar Must in Switzerland, the guy's a beast when it comes to pre embargo Cigar, cigar Must. Cigar Must. M M T. Mm. M U S T. Cigar gotcha. Must. He sells. Uh, pre-embargoes to like all the high-end restaurants so like if, if you're mm. ever feeling like you want to put on a tuxedo mm -hmm. and be special and you go to one of these mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. and they sell you a pre-embargo cigar for like 500 bucks they get it from alan mm -hmm. you know that's their source and i got it directly nice. from the source so that's the guy. He, he gave it to me as a gift i didn't even buy it just like you got it as a gift and but i would have bought switzerland it. right yeah he's in okay. lugano switzerland he's gotcha. the man He's not, he actually just had a baby recently, so oh, congrats off. to him. I, don't, I doubt he's listening. <laughs> yeah, right now, but, but who cares? <laughs> um, he's great, though. I get I get a lot of stuff from him. He hooks me up with my regional editions, too. Those are cool. He gives, gets me some really cool regional so, editions. So, re real quick, um, just want to explain to anybody who's listening. A regional edition is, uh, so what, what Habanos likes to do is they put out these cigars, and uh, they make them uh, specifically for certain regions. Now, personally, uh, like they have in España, they have a, you know, a, a Libano, they have a... Uh, you know, um, yeah, they have Hong Kong, Mexico, Hong Kong, Spain, yeah. Italy, uh, Caribbean, Russia. Uh, they even have a USA edition. They have Russia, yes, that's right. R Russia. Uh, Hermitage, uh, Ramon Alonis Hermitage, yeah. Russian. Yeah, yeah, but it, I find it to be a little bullshit because I feel like you can get them anywhere. Like you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's marketing, yeah. of course. Yeah, However, yeah. though, that Vitola is only made for that regional edition, so you can't. So let's say the the Ramon Alonis Hermitage, right? The Russian yeah. uh, regional edition. Yeah. That size, that shape, you can only get it in that cigar. In the Casa de Habanos in Russia. Yeah, exactly. So we're not talking about online. I mean, I'm talking about online. Like you can get any region. I'm sure. I'm sure there yeah, are yeah, people yeah. that resell. But what it you're just saying like, is, 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 is the the, sh the size and shape. You're only gonna get that particular cigar ramon alonis doesn't mm -hmm. make that size yeah. and shape so you're telling me that i'm not going to find like a grand brutania or a suzia in russia no you could you could because they all they all trade with each so other it is. okay so it's just a bit so of... suzia you you might want to clear that for your for your uh, 
audience also. That's that Swiss Switch regional on, edition. Yeah. They they write on the band. So there's a second band mm -hmm. under the original band. It'll say Suiza, S U I Z A. That means it's a it's a regional edition for Switzerland. Yeah, and, and it's supposed to be sold in Switzerland only. Mm -hmm. But all these La Casa del Habanos they'll trade with yeah, each other. Yeah. So like if let's say you have a store in London, right? Mm -hmm. You don't get the Swiss or the Russian regional edition. So you'll call me. Let's say I have a store in Russia. You're in London. You'll call me and say, Hey, you know, I'll trade you. I'll give you my you know, London or my, uh, uh, it's called Great Britain, special uh, regional Great, edition. Yeah, and I'll Brian. give you my Russian or Switzerland, yeah, whatever yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. And they all trade with each other. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you can get a Swiss regional edition in London and the Great Britain. In, and they're uh, usually like, uh, you, you know, they're usually like unique shapes. Like yes, like yes, exactly. Like Figurados or Salomone. No, 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 not always Figurado. The the Grand Quixote, the uh, Sancho Panza Grand Quixote is a Figurado, but they're not all Figurado. They're, no, no. Yeah, so yeah. basically the shape, it's different. So that unique, particular brand doesn't color. have that yeah. shape, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a, a different Habanos brand mm -hmm. has that shape, mm -hmm. but this particular one doesn't have it. I got you. Yeah, but yeah. They're, they're great cigars. And you know what, what's great about them? They're, they're all pretty much new and fresh, so you have to age them on your own. I mean, listen, there are places that age them for you. Like, for example, uh, in, when I was in Switzerland, I bought a Bolivar 681. It's from 2011, right? It's the regional edition for Bulgaria. I don't yeah. think they, they never made one before and they probably haven't made one since, but I got it. It's from 2011. So right now it's aged eight years. I know that Alan, he, mm -hmm. he's a, he's mm -hmm. a beast. He, he aged it. I know they're in perfect condition. So that's the kind of places obviously you want to buy from. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually a cool box that I got. Cause that's you know, crazy. Bulgaria, you got a whole box. I got a box. I had to, that's, <laughs> that's great. See, that's, that's the thing. I'm, uh, I, 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 I don't have like, I, I can't afford that shit. Right. So what I do is I try to get, what I do, is I try to get my hands on like one or two of yeah. each of them, and I just age the shit out of them, and and <laughs> I and I just look at them, you know. It's like oh, man, I just so open nice up. Look oh, at look, you're so look, you're so beautiful. And you got and you you're you, so beautiful, <laughs> Diplomatico Canada <laughs> edition. You're so beautiful. I don't have that. Bolivar <laughs> Grand Bretagne edition, like in the <laughs> Spanish. Yeah, but editions. you you gotta you gotta make up an excuse why you're looking <laughs> and they give them their yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna reorganize maintenance, them. Maintenance. Yeah, maintenance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's that's that's the way I roll, you know, because it's like like. If I could throw six hundred on a box, or uh, you know, I, I, w I would be. This would be a whole different story, dude. And trust expensive. me, there's plenty of cigars out there that I don't have that I, I wish I did. No, 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 no. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just saying, like my collection is, is so all my boxes. I do have boxes full of Cubans that I'm aging for five years, mm -hmm. but those are all like. Kind so of when, basic, when are you gonna smoke them? When's the right time to smoke them? Well, that's what I love about the Cubans. They always have the the date on the box, and and it's you can't. I mean, I feel like the boxes are open, so it's not 100% like you can't take it for the face value, I guess. Why is that? Well, because, I mean, who's to say that they don't swap them out? Like, for instance, one time I ordered— Yeah, but as long as it's the right cigar, and you personally yourself have been aging them for five years. Yeah. You know, for the last five years, they've been they've been kept in, in, in ideal conditions. Why not? What I'm saying is this. Uh, so we spoke about a Havanas. One time, my boy, who also orders for my Havanas, uh -huh. shout out to Steve— he got Shout out Steve. He got he got a box of Double Edmundos from 2015. Double Edmundo? Oh, Monte Cristo, Monte Cristo Double, Double Edmundos, Edmundos from 2015. The box said November 2015. So What's the problem? Well, no, I'm not saying there's a problem. What I'm saying is like is there, like really Oh, oh, did he get them aged already? Like yeah, and like, were they yeah, aged yeah, in yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah. in the right condition? What I, no, what I'm saying is like are you telling me that I have honest was holding on to a box? No, they bought of, that of box. Double Edmundos for 4 years and then decided to sell them for the regular Double Edmundo price, four-year-old aged. They, That's what I'm saying. They were from the box set 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. And that happens. That actually happens so, so more often than, than you would think. So now, whenever I order from my Havanas, I'm always like, oh, please be a 2015. <laughs> please be a 2015. You know? There are some websites where they'll tell you before mm -hmm. bef beforehand the, the date on the box. Like EGM. E yeah okay and uh, those they're, they're, guys spend yeah those guys they're expensive cigars but if you like i have honest is good for like regular stuff yeah. if you want to get yeah like, the regular production you want to get the rare shit egm is yeah fun. yeah i i bought from egm i actually bought a bahike and i bought from them a cohiba eight plus eight siglo four do you know what that is it's a year of the dog yeah, i know what siglo four is but what so the it's a siglo four and it has it's it's made for oh, the oh it's the, year it's of the, the zodiac yeah 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 it's the zodiac yes that's uh, it so it comes in a, in a nice black lacquered box crazy. different from like the the regular one but i i think they do it themselves you know, in they, spain they did a cohiba one last year the year of the pig yeah. and i think that was like 800 dollars for each cigar yes. oh 800 dollars a cigar no 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 the one i got was like 800 bucks for the box or the maybe pack? even 600 uh 16 16 8 plus 8 they call it for some reason yeah, wait no, I'm it's talking good about the Cohibas. 
the Co- last year's Cohibas. Cohiba. They, they did I, did, I did a Siglo Four. Oh, I got a Siglo. That's, that's a year. Right. I think it was either year of the dog or year of the pig. I gotta take a look. I'm pretty sure it's dog. It was <laughs> like a, oh yeah, because year of the pig I think was last. Year. No, this we're in the year of the pig right now. Next year is rat. Did you know that? Mm. How are they gonna sell cigars with rats on them? See, you sound like these people I used to know back in the day. Dirty rat, flying pig. That's pig. Pig is okay. Yeah, but rat. Dirty, dirty rat. I, I've never smoked a dirty rat. Because of the name? Oh, They're oh there's delicious. also Velvet Rat. Velvet Rat? Uh, but I hear those are actually great cigars delicious. from what I hear. Well, here's my argument. My argument is I can call a cigar a POS. Okay. Piece of shit. Okay. And I swear if it's delicious, you're going to see motherfuckers walking around like, yo, you tried that piece of shit there? <laughs> Did you, you smoke the piece of yeah, shit? are you kidding me? <laughs> no, bullshit. Dude, I, if, I don't give a shit what it's called. If it's delicious, I'll smoke it. And Look, I'll I've heard good things it. about Dirty Rat. Yeah. And the, it, Drew Estate obviously has done a great job with them. But I'm talking about for the masses, not just Drew Estate uh, fans. For the masses, everybody in the world, are they going to be okay with smoking a Year of the Rat or buying a Year of the Rat well, cigar? Well, okay. Well, number one, right? About eighty percent. When you think rat, you but think listen, bad. but listen, but listen. About eighty to ninety percent of high end Cubans go to go to go to Asia anyway. Okay, yeah. So that's in true. Asia, it's going to be like, oh, year of the rat. It's year of the rat. I'm going to smoke a year. They don't give a shit, you know, because this is this is their thing. You have it's, a point. That is pand- true. It's yeah, pand- it's pandering to the guys that buy most of it. So yeah, who who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're, you're absolutely uh, right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, normal. I mean, I, for you, I get it. Right here in America, like year of the rat, but also, you know. Um, Cigar smokers are. You I know. did find it strange that people are bragging about smoking a, a, a cigar called Dirty Rat, and I'm thinking, I'm like, really? But like it, that's okay? It's good. To, yeah, I mean, it's a delicious cigar. Yeah, that's what I hear. You, everybody says it's, it's delicious. So it doesn't. It, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter, it, right? The whole. It's. I think it's almost the irony of it that it's called a Dirty Rat. You know, like honestly, it, it, he has a his cigar called the Nasty. The nasty. Yeah, and now he has the nasty fritas. Yeah, nasty delicious. fritas. That's the new. Yeah, one. like you know what I mean. Like, and people smoke the shit out of them yeah. because. Yeah, I mean, you have a point. You're right, and I they mean, they called, did well he, with those cigars. He called, his, he called his flavored cigars acid. That's okay, you know I mean? though. Well, is it? Because at first, when you tell people acid, they're like, yeah, yo, are you trying to sell me drugs, boy? No, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good certain, thing. No, but it has certain connotations. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, if you're if you're talking about, right, if you're talking about just generally the cigar the spectrum of all the people that smoke cigars, the majority of cigar smokers, I think, don't do acid. You know what I mean? You know and what? I've noticed a lot of them don't even like marijuana. Yeah, they don't do drugs. They're not drug users. That's they, crazy. No, it's, I mean, I get it. It's, well, I, there's a new... No, but they, they actually frown upon it, and they'll they'll say, no, oh, no, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Don't We don't do drugs. You don't, you shouldn't do drugs either. But at the same time, though, I got to tell you, uh, you know, uh, there's, I know... Oh, my kids aren't listening. Uh, I know a lot of, <laughs> I know a lot of, like, older cigar smokers that are just, they like to party. Seriously. I mean, I, I don't blame exist, them. They exist. I, I thought this goes one and one. Is when you when you smoke a cigar, what do you want to do? You want to relax. Mm-hmm. You want to you want to put your feet up. You want to chill. And I'm not surprised at all that you know people smoke well, a cigar when they're having a good time. Well, I mean, for instance, I like I said on, on my YouTube channel, I have about 95 reviews. I too have a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna plug <laughs> that. We're gonna plug that very soon. Don't worry. But not a single review. Am I sober? I'm high as fucking every single one. I think you're funny as hell. Yeah, when well, that's when you're the high. thing is, it's uh, all the barriers are down. Right? By the so, way, I, I gotta say, I'm a fan of yours too. Thank I, you. I'm no, not just a guest. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. <laughs> my thank friend. you. Appreciate so, uh, it. So, uh, and, and I feel like I'm more honest, honestly, and I don't think about it too much. So yeah, it's just whatever comes out. Yeah, you know? Because if you think about it too much, and then you start sounding like halfway like nuts and oats with a <laughs> bit of you know <laughs> some gasoline. You know, or whatever. And some barnyard. So listen, uh, we, <laughs> we, 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 we have a, we have a, a little bit of time left. Uh, okay. I want to close up on this. All right, let's now, do it. Now you, uh, this is something that so I I always considered myself like quite a smart ass when okay. it comes to cigars. But you, you the other day I learned something from you that blew my mind. I want you to kind of inform our listeners yeah, man, about the black light. I brought it with me actually. Too bad we can't show it. Yeah, yeah, but, to people that are listening, but, explain, but it's very simple. Explain <laughs> and then direct them to where they can check out your video. All it. right. So on YouTube, I, I did a video right of how how you can uh, be absolutely sure that your Cuban cigar is real. Right. So the only the only thing that it really works with the, the actual cigars themselves are actually Cohiba, Monte Cristo, and any Reserva or Grand Reserva new ones. These are, these are the new bands that you could test. Mm. The older bands, mm. they don't have any of the hidden co- codes. However, every Habano's box since, I believe it's 2011, has a hidden crown 
in it. So if you put the black light over the box, right? You know where the tax stamp mm-hmm. is, that mm-hmm. sticker mm-hmm. with the barcode? Mm-hmm. So it's not just the barcode that you could check, which you should. You should absolutely check the authenticity code. And that's exactly what it's called on the Habanos.com website. It's called the authenticity code. And on there, there are numbers. You put those numbers into the website. The website tells you if that if the numbers match the cigars that are supposed to be in there. In addition to that, you have to get a UV light. It's called a 365 nanometer UV light. Don't get a 395 because it will not work. 365 nanometer UV light. There's a link for it under my video on YouTube. Just watch the video. You'll see exactly how I do it. I'm showing Artie right now. Do you see on the Reserva Band, no, yep, there's yep. hidden there's yep. hidden Taino heads, mm-hmm. heads on the Reserva Band. Mm-hmm. And on the actual Cohiba Band, there's numbers mm-hmm. that are hidden. And you can only see them when, the, when you're pointing the UV light at them. Wh- now, on the Monte Cristo, if you look on the back of the Monte Cristo, if you point the UV light at the back of the Monte Cristos, you'll have the letters M and C, Monte Cristo. And that's, of course, on the newer bands also. Uh, I think within the last five years, all the bands, they have that hidden MC on there. The Cohiba has the hidden numbers, and the Reserva and Grand Reserva ha- have the hidden Taino heads that you can only see with the black light. How you were going to say something. Yeah, the boxes. So on the, bo- so the, bo- so, uh, on the tax stamp. All of them? Uh, like uh, all from the, all 2011 even, or 12. Even the punches? Every the single, okay. every single so Cuban right. cigar, every single tax stamp, you're supposed to see a crown. Uh, I'm sorry, not a crown. It's a crest. Mm-hmm. And th- there's, a, there's a picture of the, cre- of the crest on the tax stamp itself. Yeah. And then when you wave the black light on it, you'll see a hidden one. It, you can't miss it okay, as so long as you wave the black let light. Let me ask you this. Uh, does that also need to be, what you say, 365? Yes, that has to be 365 oh, even nanometers. Stamp, even, even for, even the, for t- the tax stamp. Yeah, because with the 395, I'm not exactly sure what happens, but the way somebody explained it to me, it's, it doesn't it's work out too well. so it doesn't. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's exactly wavelength. what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a different wavelength. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, listen, we're about to round up here. Uh, just really quickly, I want to let you guys know uh, that you guys can catch me every Monday, 5 p.m. here on uh, City World Radio, okay? We got my show, Smoke Signals. We're going to be doing it every week. Going to have different guests. You going to come back on? Absolutely, Thank man. Thank you so much, man. If you'll have me. Of course, of course. It was a great talk. And then um, also you guys can catch me at Ash Hole NYC. That's A-S-H-H-O-L-E-N-Y-C. That's Instagram and YouTube. I'm going to be doing a lot of really cool uh, YouTube stuff soon. Uh, I'm going to be putting my reviews up there too, and you can catch my reviews and a bunch of other content on my Instagram. Post, why don't you tell people where they can find you at? At I Post Alone is my Instagram. Each word is separated with an underscore. So it's at I underscore post underscore alone. And uh, my link to my YouTube is on my Instagram, but in case you're uh, you're not Instagram savvy, just go to YouTube, type in Post Alone. Most likely Post Malone will pop up. But mm-hmm. if you put in Post Alone Cigars, you should see a few, a few of my videos. But like I said, there's a link from my Instagram. Please give me a follow, subscribe. Mm-hmm. I'll be very grateful. Mm-hmm. And please, Artie, if you'll have me back here, I'll, yeah, I'd love yeah. to, man. And yeah, you guys should definitely check it out because uh, he, he, he does post... A lot of really, really, really great content. A lot of information. Thank you. I appreciate stuff. that. Yeah, a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you're new to cigars, and you kind of want to know, you know, what's going on, uh, he, he does keep it up to date. Me, I don't really focus on the newer shit as much as he does. So I, I, I like to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of random. Dude, I, you I, have great content. But, I, but I'll post something from five years ago. You know, if you want to know about the newest state of cigars, what's coming out, what's new, what's fresh. I post alone is definitely the place Thank where you, you gotta brother. go. Okay, and uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are done here. Thank, Thank you, you so s- much for having yeah. me. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you so much for listening to Smoke Signals. Good night. Good night. I love cigars. Blah, blah, blah.